Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be reapproaching a deck that kind of was super high post rotation and then fell off very quickly whenever kind of that rotation happened. Cards that we were hoping came out in like that Dustmourne kind of area did not happen. Bloombro didn't really give us much to go off of. But we are playing Demir Skeletons because Foundation gave us quite a bit of new cards. There's even some that I'm not necessarily playing in here. The one I'll bring up immediately is this guy reassembling skeleton i think just a two mana one one at any rate is just too bad even though we can technically bring it back and we also do not have tiny bones in here just to get that out of the way right now but other than that what did we get access to well in terms of just skeletons we get another tiny bones the third act of one in this video um or not in this video but in arena kind of standard right now Someone actually played Tiny Bones Typo today, which was very cool. They had every card with Tiny Bones in standard in play, I'm pretty sure, outside of some random card. But whenever an opponent discards a card, exile it from the graveyard with the stash counter on it. During your turn, you may play those cards if you don't that you don't own with stash counter on them from exile. And mana of any type can be spent to cast those spells. So this is kind of a main board hate piece for like the Hottigen piles, the reanimate piles. Things like that where your opponent's casting like a chart, of course. Let me uh, draw two cards and then discard a card. Things like that. So the Tiny Bones works very, very well for that. So that's super nice and super cool. The new card as well is Gutless Plunderer. This is a card that is a bit expensive for its power and toughness at being a three mana 2-2. Two -two. But it does have Death Touch. So the power is not necessarily too important outside of hitting our opponent over side the head. But that gets a little bit of help with Corpse of the Lost and another card we'll talk about momentarily. But this says Death Touch Raid. Raid is another old mechanic. If an ability triggers, if a creature you control attacks this turn, which also says kind of inability, when this creature enters, if you attack this turn, look at the top three cards of your library. You may put one of those cards back on top of your library, put the rest into your graveyard. Works incredibly well when we're talking about getting a Corpse of the Lost online. A Forsaken Miner in the graveyard. At one point, we have three of these in the graveyard to get to bring them all back on our opponent's instep, which is very cool. Other than that, this card is very nice to also have as in another Mockingbird target because that is just a really cool effect that we can kind of copy. And again, like I said, Corpse of the Lost buffs this into a 3-2 kind of guy that even if we don't want the raid mechanic, we can still just play it for three mana and have it have haste and get in along with that. So other than that, we get a reprint back. And Foundations being a Death Baron. This is a 1 and 2 black. We can play it off like caverns and stuff too if we really want to. But this says skeletons you control and other zombies you control get a plus 1, plus 1 and have Death Touch. So now all of our skeletons are super lethal in terms of any creature that attempts to try to block them. So there's no more... Oh, I don't really want to swing into that Atraxa because I don't necessarily get it done. Or like a Valgoth, for example, I guess is a better one because that taps one of the attacks. But I don't really want to swing into it because I don't really get much out of it. But now if every single skeleton you control has Death Touch, they're a lot harder to want to block. Your opponent's not going to want to block with their 6-5 or their 4-5s and things like that. Blocking just a random 1-3, right? Because now this 1-3 kills theirs and we get value on it because we're attacking into it. So... Other than that, Death Baron, a nice good reprint for the deck. Outside of that, we have Into the Flood Mall, Flood Pits, Drowner, and the Dispersal kind of as spot up removal. We want to bounce things more than anything, making our opponent kind of recast them. It works pretty effectively against like the aggro decks because of the fact that they play like a Monastery Swiss Spear, as you'll see a ton in this video. Kind of bouncing that and forcing them to replay it and they'll attack with it kind of puts them back a turn and the fact that they open themselves up for counter attack from us and that's really where we want to be and for the final card that's like the non-skeleton card in the deck is harvester misery um so so on this card in today's video but it does come up huge in one matchup so it kind of buys itself that favor now one thing you'll notice as well if you ever do put this in your thing it says we only have 12 skeletons that's very misleading because this case makes skeletons this Corpse of the Lost makes skeletons, so that's an additional eight right there already. And then Mockingbird, most of the time, is actually copying a skeleton. So very quickly, we get over 20 skeletons in the deck, so it's not actually that, like, kind of soft. But with that said, 
Hope you all enjoyed the video. Let's go ahead and dive in, see how it goes, and I'll uh, let's go game. All right, here we go. We're ready, I think. Blue black land, call it a day. We got skellies, we got ways to make them bigger, and of course, we're against mono red. Honestly, I think I just want to time walk them right now. Tell them to restart. They can figure it out later. This is a card for crime. So let's spend both of them because we can always bring them back later, I guess, right? All right, there was just four in a row. My bad. I wasn't ready for the fourth one. Or th third one. I, dude, I play magic. I can't count. Are you kidding me? But I have a two one. It can't block. We're trying our little best. This, there's a charming scoundrel. Interesting enough. Okay. Harvester, pretty cool card. I want to save that. How do I want to do this? Do I want to put a lot of skeletons down? Do I want to minus two and just bring back one here? It seems like a fine play. Yeah, it's actually not that bad because they can't really monster trade this scoundrel, right? Let's just go that route. Oh boy, am I pumped. For the first time in a long time, it might be a good time to be a Browns fan. I'm watching them beat the Steelers. I'm having a good time. Nobody can stop me now. They just scored a touchdown and they got a fumble recovery. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> We're like really negative <laughs> in terms of win loss ratio. But here we go. Death Baron's up. We hit for six. Old Death Baron, a old kind of card. A commander player is going to know this card well. It's not a zombie itself, which is definitely a downside for sure. But another lord to just buff our skeletons always feels good. And really quickly, it just also puts our opponent on the back end. And these all have death touch. So it's not like they get free blocks, even if they put a massive creature in front of us, which has been a problem before. Because we only have like small little two twos or like three twos, things like that. But death touch means come at thee, bro. Come at thee. But our opponent played a a squee, which I haven't seen in a very long time. Second miner can't block. Death Baron can. It's like possible that I'm dead here, but I don't think so. They shocked that. That totally makes sense to me. Brings my board by three. Double attack. Still can't block. There's nothing I could do here. What are we doing? Okay. They're thinking about doing damage to something, but they choose not to. Hey. Pretty good. We're in there. Down three you go. That Death Baron, if they did not remove it, we would have had lethal, which is crazy. Fifth land seems pretty good that we have this game. Death Baron just has to block. I guess, I mean, Monster Strike, Lightning Strike does it. I mean, so many cards do it here. It's so hard to think otherwise. Black Storm would be sick, but they would die. No, they wouldn't. That's not how that card works. Fireclasm also does it. They concede. Wow. All right. Sick. We didn't even have the best card in our deck. Opponents first. Well, we got a couple new skeletons in our hand, so I feel like this should be like a latch on keep, right? The only real problem being like no interaction or opponents just unanswered for a turn or two. We'll see. A three, who knows? Who knows how long they're unanswered for? Skeleton, just so I don't have to take damage here. Yeah, that didn't have that. This one does though. Welp, no interaction for your boy. Sure. 
This matchup also strictly kind of depends on who's on the play and who's on the draw, by the way, if you're not aware. A lot of times we're able to be aggressive and get there quickly if we are on the play, but seeming that we're on the draw, it feels like we won't. But let's see what they do. Typically, this is where like a manifold mouse comes in. A hit browner coming down. Just tap the challenger. A piss can draw some time. I'm not going to block because I might even be copying it. Wow, they lightning strike the 2 1. Not even giving me an option. Okay. Well, interesting. I wasn't ready for that play. You got a monster trace now or what? Sure. A lot of missed value just going for the six, but I get it. Sometimes you can't really, can't really stop it. We attack so we can get the plunder to happen. Let's have death touch. Leave one of these cards on top of the library. The rest will go into your graveyard. So good card, but into the flood mall might be all we need. Hey, what's up? It's still taps from the... Is it stun token? Yeah, put a stun counter. Not a stun token. Just stun counter. All right. Well, they gave us everything. Sweet. It's like a weird spot where like... Maybe I can just attack with my death toucher. I think so. Sweet. One, two, three mana spent on this card. So enters as a copy of this. Uh, put one. But I like. Honestly, I'm gonna decline on all those. All those are not right where we need to be. Now we have a death toucher in the air. They hit a land. Seems reasonable enough. See what happens. Maybe they attack. I mean, they have five creatures to my one, but they haven't chose to attack yet. Okay. Didn't I just put you in the graveyard? <laughs> That's how I feel. Let's play a case. Let's play a tiny bones. And then let's go ahead and. Pass, I guess. Now this is where it feels incredibly weird. Oh, we're getting to combat this turn, huh? Yes, sir. Stalker Frenzy? Eh. So the same exact scenario as last turn, but a little bit like worse, huh? Okay. Um. um. We do this one because it's just, it'll be smaller if they play it next turn. And now we have to kind of do some math here. So they can grow that. They could deal five, six, seven. Or that's fine. Sure. Now that I think about it, I could have done it the opposite way. Because then I can activate this and make them discard that. And I'm able to play it. Hmm. Weird. Weird champ. Legendary creature. We draw it immediately. Lock. 
we take three, four. We still have chances, I guess. You never know. They could just draw only Lance. I don't know. You can definitely see the difference if like we were on the play in comparison to the draw. Like this would be, it'd just be backwards a little bit where we were applying a lot more pressure. But take the damage, sure. Pass. Just need a dead card, any good card here, they win. Just is what it is. Land. Well, that's three, six, nine, ten. Yeah. So if they were to attack out and we draw the best card in our deck, they could have lose. Technically. Um, and they grow that first. Maybe not even giving me the chance to forget about it. Um, we're dead. Kind of regardless. That's three, four, five. Yes. All right, do we rip it off the top? Oh, dude. Oh my gosh, man. If we would have ripped enchantment, we could have done it. Oh, we go first? A weird hand to want to keep, but good card, pretty good card. A lot of interaction. We'll just see what happens, I guess. Play this down now. It's got the mana that we need open, so I'm not too worried about it. Oh, wow. Game number three. It's Mono Red once again. I, I'm three for three, like running into Mono Red immediately. But we'll see what happens. I have no idea. And I'm three for three on, I think, a Monastery Swiss Spear turn one. Let me just pick that back up. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to deal with that, brother. Um, let's put this in play. Let's name Skeleton, even though we got really nothing going on. I'll play his little merfolk and then I'll play maybe a corpse of the lost kind of depends what my opponent does because you gotta remember whatever we stun down is stunned down for not only the turn that they have but then the next turn so it gives us like a turn without it in play I'd like to move to combat no maybe at least that you know they're representing right but look at their deck they are representing us for sure. All right. Well, now we change our plan. Yeah, attack me. The reason why we, we allow this is because we get to stun one and kill one. So it's like fine because then one's stuck over there for a while and then like this shirt like dies. Who knows? Maybe they're soul reading me. A red deck just like be like, no, I don't. I don't think so. like that's the it's like a weird thing but i'm also just like not opposed to it right let's play corpse of loss get it down and then we hit again this will be stunned for a turn so we're fine now we will have into the flood mall honestly we play 22 lands we don't really want a ton of lands but this is one of the few situations where i definitely need to hit one i think or want to hit one because we can have like a flood mall open. We can have a plunder open. We can have death baron down a lot of that type of stuff going on. Our fire heroes, just a lot of creatures being played about as slowly as possible. I think we hit the creature. Nice. Let's attack. I doubt there's a block. I want to get value off this plunder. I know I could have played it in attack, but the kind of idea is to get the raid ability to happen. We can choose the block or not. All right, they choose not. I play down plunder. Also getting a normal swamp turns on our verge, which is really nice. Leave one of these on top, I guess, if I'm to say one. Harvester's not that bad. But the plunder is also sick. We kind of have again. Let us go with. Let's go with Harvester, I guess. 
now we got a nice little death toucher in play we can pick this back up i guess because now we milled over thanks to this card kind of replacing the overlord is really what this card is replacing here comes another heart fire hero because of course why not we stalker frenzy oh no see if they put anything else out there Wow. Incredibly ing aggressive. Okay. Incredibly aggressive. So that wouldn't have mattered if we had the Witch Stalker in play or not at that point. Now we just go back to the corpse. I guess. Play the 3 2 back out. And then we just hold. And if I hit the land, I can play Harvester and just erase their entire board. It's kind of the idea. Change my mind like ever so slightly now that they're kind of empty handed like attacking directly into the three two is a little like tough obviously our three two dies if we play the harvester but then so then like the baron so it's like kind of whatever oh all right time to find out if our opponent's good or bad We don't ever really gain life so like depending on their attack here if they only attack with the nemesis to try to get me to do it i block at least in my opinion i do so i don't gain life regardless but if they're not going to do anything and all they oh, all they do is shut that down and so be it i guess that baron most likely we're gonna have to block anything and everything. Another land here. Definitely a tough game. How aggressive are you? A hold. Okay. Uh surprise. Alright. Feels pretty good. Um those are negative. I guess to go to seven puts me in Boros Charm Lightning Strike range, but they don't play white, at least so far. And then we'll be able to play this corpse, get a little bit more pressure back on the board, and then Flood Maul, kind of whatever. Especially if this last card is a land, most likely maybe a Witch Stalker Frenzy or something of that nature. I'm going to play corpse, and I'm just going to hold up this into the Flood Maul. I'm not going to budge much on it. Go ahead and hit them for what eight here i believe yeah corpse is lost down combat initiated i know i could play this and it would have haste but i don't think that's the move down to six because it would only deal two damage to them additional i'd much rather have this into the flood mall to bounce anything one last card yep and that's gonna do it very sick just the go wide creature plan and being a bit passive we get away with it and the harvester somehow comes online in our 22 land deck i'll take it all right, we go first a bit of a slow hand kind of like we just don't have like the turn three payoff spell But we definitely could draw it here Play our little tap creature called a day. Maybe you have to use the drowner Oh gari, okay Could go for the stash here Do and play this drowner is going to have to be used to like tap down a glissa, I imagine. Oh, is this squirming emergence? It is. It's reanimator. Okay. So gates open. We fly off the handle. 
Like we we don't slow down for nothing. We slow down, they reanimate a track, so we lose kind of smile. We lose kind of smile. Mm -hmm. Or we tap it. But if it's a Valgavoth, then like problems happen. But we have these cases to sack, so it's kind of like whatever. Um, three mana. Could cast like this card as well, right? So it's a little bit weird. Bounce like. Are looking at the top three? They could have a cut down. A lot of permanents in there. I. Combat. Like, I'm gonna pass here because I have enough for lethal on the board and I'm just gonna go for the drowner. This could be four mana board wipe. Or zombify. Zombify? That'd be pretty cool. Because then they'd put an attracts in, do the trigger, and I would tap it, and we'd win. But that's besides the point. Huh. So, that said, I'm going to flash this in, regardless. We have three mana for this. Zombie five is a sorcery. I'm assuming there's some amount of removal here. And that some amount of removal is there. All right, here we go. Another game, another Magic the Gathering experience. Swamp, Forsaken Miner. We can always Mockingbird the Miner, but I might go for the Burglar, the Burgly Boy. We got Domain, so Temporary Lockdown is definitely an advocate of a card that we'll have to deal with. That's going to help us with this plunder so we can find maybe a valuable card over kind of some of the nonsense. Two mana, maybe a beanstalk. Sure. I would love a corpse here more than anything. Well, we end up missing. So let's just play other land. We attack. We play old plunder here. Another one not on top. Okay. Return target creature opponent controls if you give us the promise return target permanent instead. So we, we just grabbed the flood mall. And then we look to kill them kind of on their end step. Cast that temporary lockdown. I know you got it. Oh, okay. Well, now we got to play around Sunfall, which sucks, kind of. All right, well. Let's attack here. One, two. I want to find. Decline all those. Okay. So, weirdly enough, <laughs> I do have target their thing, bring back three creatures on their end step. So, we knew Sunfall was coming. That's fine. Like, that was a very obvious play. We knew it was going to happen. That is perfectly fine with us. We'll take our turn. And then I just pass, and we kind of hope they tap out or do some nonsense or whatever. Temporary lockdown would have been much better for us because then we could have blown them out of the game. They cast that hard cast. Okay. This one. There's a moment to find any three Lord effects. It is now. Any are any eight copies of a Lord. And that is a copy of a Lord even better. So, and just like that, we strike down domain. Boy, oh boy. If I did not find one, <laughs> it's like, I was like, we put in the Death Baron to be a Lord for our deck. And then we also play Corpse. And I was like, if I go to another 20 and I can't find it, I'm going to freak out. But it's fine. I'm not actually going to freak out, but you know what I mean. The wall. The wall. The wall. We are first. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Yes. 
Um, let's not fully reveal that we're skeletons yet, so, yeah, I suppose. Could do it with the caverns so like into the flood malls kind of tapped out. Um, with that revealed, I guess I just let the tiny bone or into into the flood mall go. And now we'll let a land go as long as it's reasonable. Like if it's a actually I probably almost let both of them go. Corpse is so good. But Oh please. If they played the enchantment over here. Oh, it's just that card. Sick. If they would have played the... I can't even remember what it's called for some reason. But we're in. We got stuff going on. We're in. Here's nine. But, um... The Bandit's Talent. There we go. If they would have played Bandit's Talent, we would have found ourselves in a really bad spot. But we did draw a land, so it wouldn't have been that bad, I guess. We do have two lands in hand. A little bit weird. They have black mana. Available. They have a tiny bones they chose not to block with. Um, trying to get... Oh, this is actually kind of sick. Is This is discard though, right? Yeah, it's got to be discard. Sure. You know what to not get rid of? Um, well now opponent you get to make a decision. We can make one together if you'd like Yeah, I mean I guess combat these ones Don't Worry about those Don't Worry about nothing Uh-huh And we have to make a decision here. I guess. This is like no reason really. Wait. Maybe they'll panic. I don't know. Gotta pay. Just so they can't force us to discard this some way. Like they, they're going to have to duress me for it. Which I could have just left it, I suppose, you know? The last thing I wanted to do is pick this up. Uh, they somehow make me discard both, or they make me discard it to the bandit's talent again. It's a Liliana. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. That one? Off you go. Good game. Okay. To be fair, that case is not able to be activated until my next turn, so I don't really know, I guess. But like, realistically, I'm playing this Corpse of Loss. I have six damage. If they have nothing in hand, it is going to be it. But the wall, interesting deck list, honestly. Just Tiny Bones typo, I guess. We got Tiny Bones joins up. We got Tiny Bones to pickpocket. We got Tiny Bones bubble burglar, the burgly boogly boo. Um, yeah. But with that said, we take another dub. Very cool. All right, we just have to hit the three mana spot. If not, this uh, Forsaken Miner is going to hit a lot. On the play, it feels like good. All right, am I going to finish my night with... <laughs> oh, you sure am. I sure am, Smile. We're in there. Obviously, no block here. Shelter by Ghost most likely going to be a thing that happens. But we have a really cool answer to it. Oh man, I kind of, I kind of wish it was a shelter by ghost, but uh, let us just go ahead and tap this down. It'll be tapped for two turns, so they can bump it now. I don't really care that much because again, it's just for that turn. Now I could do one of two things. I could play a death baron or I can go for the plunder. I think the plunder is to play. Again, that hero is locked down for the turn. Um, and I guess I go for the death touch here, like I said. And I can grab just a land here works, I think. Yeah, I think I'm okay with grabbing another land in addition to what's going on. 
We always have dispersal to bounce the hero potentially. We have a drowner to re-tap it. Oh. They're full mu All right. You're way cooler than what I thought. I thought they were just going to be, you know, the typical pile, right? Like the, uh, I do what I do when I do it, I guess. And we're going to attempt to survive the game. I mean, I guess, I guess we're in there, right? These lords are huge. They'll take one trade, which is fine. Put them down to eight. And now we have the dispersal. As long as they don't have that protection spell, I can throw a blocker in front. Right, but again, I think against this matchup specifically, I have to be super protective. Also, I brought it up in the very beginning. It is pouring the snow in this Steelers Browns game. You can barely even watch it happen. I just hear like a very small shout every now and then. I had an opponent that was tanking really long, so I pulled up the game because I was like, yeah, this is something I need to do. And I looked over, bro, I can't see nothing. Nothing's going on. There's not a thing happening. But what is up? There's a lot of damage here. The hero hasn't been targeted yet. It's going to deal five, if not ten. There's a challenger. Sure. You have a double strike. We'll just throw a baron in front of it. And then they're most likely going to tap out to do something here. And we can do reverse lethal. Overly aggressive, my opponent. And we will take the dub back home. Country roads, something, something, something. And just like that, we have eight damage on board. And we get the strike back. Very cool. Didn't hold anything back. Thought they were going to have it sealed up and win. Monsters raging there. Um, we kind of walk them into that play and we get rewarded for it. So very cool. All right. So we ran it back. We got skeletons. We got new ones, especially, and I definitely was happy to try them out. I'm not entirely sure if all the removal I have is necessarily worth it, or if we need to add like maybe a bit more skeletons, but our deck is very misleading on how many we actually play. And I also think this deck is actually a better ley line deck than even the one we tried for in the past. We kind of played this one before just kind of as a joke more than anything like oh let's play the ley line but it's like a really bad draw right but this deck feels like it might enjoy it a lot more considering like death baron's got to be insane with ley line right and just giving this like that haste and then also making the flood pits drowner like that skeleton as well and things like that but it might not be it might not be worth it i don't i don't know i think the answer is no after like playing more but at the time like every time i played this i was like i had a corpse in play i played a baron could you imagine if this was also a skeleton be crazy it says skeletons you control and other zombies so if it's actually a skeleton it would get the counters i think and the only other part about it is on the other zombies because it's a zombie itself but if we made it into a skeleton i think it would get buffed so it would buff itself which is kind of funny so it'd be like a random four three which is cool but other than that i i had fun i think this deck kind of showed what it did i mean that's the thing with aggro decks you don't really have a whole lot going on i do think this harvester of misery even though i had to be good in one game probably could just be this guy um the overlord um i think i can't remember the channel now i've been kind of watching so many magic channels lately just as my downtime like over on my other monitor while i'm playing the new tft season so kind of hard for me to remember everybody i think it's mythic mike is that right i could be wrong about that but i think they were playing the skeletons and they had a really cool list they were playing this i was really impressed with it i definitely think you could probably play this and maybe almost like the drowner is so good at times man this card's so sick it's so hard to like cut but i think the overlord's pretty good as well because it will allow you to grab kind of all these on whatever card you need while also triggering your corpse with a loss again. So it's kind of this weird like bouncing act you have to do. But with that said, I hope you all enjoy and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.